Welcome to Oh Brother, a podcast three brothers trying to figure it all out with your hosts, Brandon, Colin, and Aaron. On this week's show, peer-reviewed chicken typology. What's going on? Hello. 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 Still don't think my settings are where they're supposed to be. Oh no. Why do you keep breaking stuff? Ask my children. <laughs> Speaking of breaking stuff, I did get to upgrade a piece of my recording equipment recently. <laughs> because you broke what? Because my because um somebody may have broken the uh boom arm that my mic is connected. Oh, all right. Oh, no. Like back and forth, it was aggressively pulled in a downward manner towards the floor, <laughs> Bre- breaking it off the bracket and the little insert. Goes- oh. oh, dear. <laughs> I have strong. Strong. Oh, oh, no. Zero. This is yeah. very bad. Well, they're just, you know, very interested in how things work. Push the limit. Work. Right. But you don't know how it's going to work until you understand how it doesn't. (laughs) I mean, that is a a sentence. That's how they teach medicine, right? Uh, Not medicine is not actually. Okay. So here's a spoiler for you and all of you listening. Um, Dr. Gregory House is a fictional character, and real medicine doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think that's what they just want you to believe, and they're really just keeping all this stuff. Yes. It's not always Guillain-Barre, and you don't just, like, order 75 billion tests to figure out what it isn't. So, that's not... <laughs> I still, still have my doubts. I don't know. Yeah, we are. Um, what have we been doing? Uh, we went on a bike ride on the Katy Trail recently, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, I am teaching. We're working on Lillian with two big skills of hers. The uh, she's getting very good on the bike, and so we had to teach the how to downhill do, cornering how to, and. Well, I will get, I'll get, I'll get to that story. So I had to teach um, how to stop and put your foot down, right? And hold the bike kind of a, it's a big, it's a big Oh, scale. and yes, not right. fall on your head. Yes. Right. Well, what she would yeah. do is she would just kind of get to a rolling stop, go slow enough. And then she'd just bail. Right. And she, <laughs> she, she's pretty good at it. Not going to lie. Um, it was just like, it's not really sustainable. <laughs> um, and so we, we were teaching that and for then, the bike mostly. It's not yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we were teaching that, and then we also had to learn how to start on your own, right? How to push yourself off, get your foot on the bike, and pedal without without anybody help. Uh, both of those she mastered in like, and <laughs> there you go. Because yeah. So anyway, we went to the K Trail, and we were like, okay, here we go. We're going to go, and we're going to um, get on. And there's a small downward. Uh, really narrow part that goes from the parking gravel parking lot onto the gravel trail. And I was like, Lillian, look, this is your gravel. We've never biked on this before. When you fall, it's going to be okay. It's going to hurt. Blah. And we need to stay away from the big rocks because there are big rocks in here. It's not evenly graded gravel, right? They were just kind of like, ah, I've got enough for some here put down. So some of these things are like chert almost like they're, <laughs> they're, they're not good trail material, but anyway, we, uh, she goes from the, the car and just goes blazing down the hill, hard turn to the right and takes off like a rocket down the <laughs> down, down the trail. Oh, oh <laughs> we're no. just all sitting there like, oh, uh, <laughs> whoops. So we uh, had to go catch up with her, which was fun. And uh, she did she did fall one time, but that was because she was going. She's getting to this really bad habit of um, biking with one hand 
because you know she's that's how the best. cool kids do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, she was biking with one hand and t- turned her head completely around to see all of us behind her. Oh, oh no! <laughs> and and I'm like ah, screaming at her, and she turns around, and the part part of the trail that we're on right now is elevated, right? Because this is an old the Katy Trail is an old railroad. And so they had elevated it through fields, stuff like that. And she was like going straight towards off of the elevated thing. Uh, and she quickly, you know, she overcorrected and uh, obviously slid out and crashed on and burned on the, uh, on the gravel. So I had to reiterate, you know, we need to keep our both hands on the handlebars for just a little bit longer and not on. So. <laughs> Yeah, that would be... times. But she rode her bike <laughs> the other day. Seriously, um, I was at work. Megan was home with the kids. And Megan said Lillian rode her bike for three hours, almost nonstop. Holy cow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> A lot. That's crazy. I mean, Liege best on Liege before you know it. Here it goes. <laughs> what I'm expecting. <laughs> but you know it's it's brought up a lot of a lot of memories of of us riding bikes first on the gravel driveway and then on the paved driveway uh and then using those to kind of get around and first little taste of of freedom and independence yeah that's very true i It was it's it, it's very uh, you know it's weird like one of those things where now I realize like dude I totally could have just ridden my bike to like Texaco right. it was totally within the realm of possibility <laughs> why did I not do that like I don't know because <laughs> you were a good child <laughs> well I think at the time it's like oh my gosh that's so far uh, yeah. right uh, but now I'm like yeah. that is that is not far at all at like all. what a- <laughs> right. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. There was that like, oh, I can just go out and wrap up. There wasn't really any place to go. No, uh, <laughs> way out there in the <laughs> farm road land. But <laughs> you could just go around, I guess. Like, <clears throat> Wait, build a sweet treehouse on the neighbor's property without asking them. That's a thing that happened. That Whoopsie. Really safe. <laughs> it's very safe. Totally safe to do that. Everything's fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. I mean, nobody really got mad about it. So, wait, what's all right? That? So we uh we built a treehouse just like at the side of the road in some random tree. <laughs> yep. And so we <laughs> was like, hey, we could do this. So we took like random scraps of wood from the barn. And uh, other, like my friend's barn, and uh, we just sort of like made a treehouse because <laughs> you can't the side right? of the road. You know, it wasn't like good. It was some <laughs> boards nailed to a tree, as you do. It was uh, when you're, <laughs> yep. When you're like, oh man, I would have been. We would. I would have been like. You were young. I was younger. What? Aaron doesn't remember. It's like third, it. fourth grade, something like that. So like <clears throat> nine, <laughs> ten maybe tops probably when we did that. <clears throat> so uh yeah, that was a thing that happened. We just did <laughs> It was really badly constructed. It was mostly uh some you know those like like a ship ladder kind of thing where you just like nail the board to the tree. So that you can, yeah. like, it's perpendicular to the tree, so you just sort of climb up. We did that. And then up in the tree somewhere, there was a couple of branches, and we just sort of nailed some boards across them so that you could <laughs> sit in it. Basically, you just made, like, a couple of places to sit, and we called it a tree house. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't really a cohesive unit. Yeah, it was, oh, it was like a couple platforms up in some high branches that you could sit on. 
that was it. That's what we did. <laughs> you could put snacks up there. Like, you could, like, set them down relatively without them falling off. And that's, uh, yeah, we did that. And then, um, because <clears throat> Colin is terrified of heights, we built a lean-to thing at the bottom uh, that he could, <laughs> he could habitate in uh, because he was not climbing that tree <laughs> when he was like, no, he would have been like five or six, maybe. So he's not coming up there. I'd say that right now. <laughs> I would not go up there <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that tree was that tree, which is gone, by the way, listeners, it was cut down by, I think, the power company because it was precariously close to the power pole, the power lines. Well, and it was very and, dead, if I remember for, for eventually uh, like the whole thing well i mean after we were using it when we were in it it was green that's a thing but like yeah. <laughs> there's one thing that electric companies if there's a tree like a hundred yards from the wire they're like we should cut it down let's do it get out of here yeah. Get <laughs> but yeah we did that uh yeah it was bad it was badly done with stolen nails and little bits of wood <laughs> <laughs> well, we just like hang out in there whole, yeah kind of like the whole bike thing right it was a it was a period of a, a way for independence right and uh doing your own thing yeah so it was kind of cool looking back now as an old man ish uh, is that a good plan maybe not but you know, it's definitely a very. We did that. We like drew it all on the board. We like decorated, like graffitied all the wood, all the boards. Right, I remember that. It's like weird pen and pencils. And Colin uh, died in a pothole. That's what also I remember about the treehouse. <laughs> coming home on the bike. You know. <clears throat> no, you were coming to the treehouse. I think I was coming to it because I was already up in the tree. I'm pretty sure when this happened. So, uh, listeners, if you're not familiar with chip and seal roads, basically what happens is they just sort of dump some tar on the road and then fling some gravel about and go, yep, that's a road surface. (laughs) Am I right? Is that accurate, Colin? Is that fairly? <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah, they they take they take little bits, uh, yeah, yeah, tar, and then little bits of asphalt and chunks or whatever the chip is, and then they throw that down. And they're like, the cars, we don't need to have a roller out here, and we don't need to do anything fancy or have this pre mix. The cars driving on this will smooth we'll it out it. and create a perfect, which is a lie that will last, which is for definitely years a lie, and years and years. It will last for months. Uh, possibly <laughs> weeks, and then <laughs> so as you can imagine, it's not yeah, it's not a strong surface, it's not a compact, it's not like asphalt where it's like blended and mixed together. It's definitely either, yeah, it's just they they apply those two things separately. Now on those roads, the chip and seal ones there, I think they might have put the tar on the top uh, sometimes, but anyway, they like so they did that badly, and so uh, in Missouri, as you have probably gathered listeners uh the temperatures fluctuate wildly uh within the space of several days <laughs> so Whoa. what happens is there's uh, since it's not really compacted together very well uh moisture gets in there relatively easily and the expanding and contracting of moisture just destroys this stuff mm-hmm. so you can get potholes <laughs> easily the size of like tables right <laughs> right especially on a random farm road that nobody drives on really. And so (laughs) you can get some massive potholes. Now, the fun thing about this is you can pop some like mega wheelies on your bike. Sure. If you're paying attention. (laughs) However, if you're not paying attention, you're basically driving into a crater. (laughs) And that's what Colin did. (laughs) He like, he was all like, hey, I'm coming. Because I was in the tree house and our neighbor was there and we were up in the tree and Colin's like, yeah, I'm coming. And then all of a sudden we just hear like screaming and he's laying on the ground. His knees just like bleeding everywhere. Like, oh, oh no. <laughs> now what? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> oh no, how do we get him home now? Na- neighbors came out and uh, drove me back down. I believe, yes, I believe neighbors did come out <laughs> to the rescue. Where, yep. where, where was this exactly? Like, where on it was the corner of the road? So, if you come out of dad's, uh, it was right up from the driveway. Yeah. Like, if you leave the dad's uh-huh. driveway and you know, the, you, you go right. like towards town. Right. That first right, that mm-hmm. no, the well, yeah, the first, first left hand turn the road takes, it was just right there. Yeah. So if you come out of dad's driveway, oh, okay. you turn right, and then the, the road goes back left, right on that corner was a <laughs> big tree. It was a big oak tree. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. By the fence. Yep. Uh, yeah. It was just oh, okay. I got you now. Yeah. So this was, this was pre Aaron era. So. No, you were around. You were just at the house. Not very old. Um, you, yeah. You would have been very, very small. Like, Two, two. So, yeah. <laughs> not on the bike yet. Yeah, I was like, I because when you when you said fort, I was thinking about the um, I don't know what they call it a fort. It's more like a, a hobbit hole um, down the little little ravine. That that's where my mind went to. There are no roads down there, so I was like, oh, well, okay. This is... That also that can be part two of this discussion. That was great, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, since you brought it up, Aaron, why don't you describe what you remember about the? Well, I don't really, I don't really remember much. I just it in in the bottom of one of the ravines. I don't know if you would call it that. A giant gully. Um, we had some ravine. Of it's fair. Weird, like there was a boar and there was like a tire and there was like it looked like more like a lean to than anything in my memory. Uh, and that's just kind of where like we hung out and like played. It wasn't like anything like I mean like it was cool because you know my my mind was like ah this is a a fort and I got all this cool stuff but I it it, it didn't really feel like a a great place because rainwater and you know just all kind of cultivated right there. So Oh that was why that's what that's what the tire in the wood was for. So if you remember, hold on, hold on. it was right at the top <laughs> of that. Yeah, it was right at the top of the ravine, kind of where where right where it began. Yeah. So the there was we put the tires. I don't know where we got these tires. Also, that's a that's a sort of a mystery. Going, After you did that, yeah. I was like, oh, there is tires. Where did we get tires? Why did we have those? Yeah. <laughs> but we put them down there, and we kind of put those on the bottom. Uh to make the bottom flat between the steep sides of the ravine. And then we laid the boards, which I think were pieces. I think dad was replacing the boards on the trailer. Yeah. And I think we took, yeah, there were big thick old things and we drug some of those down there. We like cut them and drug them down there and we laid them across. So they elevated it up off the ground a little bit. So what Mm. you're right. When it did rain, the water just went under (laughs) <laughs> okay. Which again, n- when I you're know. a child, this is a brilliant idea. Now, uh, in my mid 30s, the only thing I can about is like, how did we not find like all the snakes? Like, what on earth? What were we doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's what my brain thinks right now. <clears throat> yeah. And then we got some kind of tarp or something. It was an, like from an somewhere. Old army tarp canvas thing i think it was maybe the thing it was like brown oh, yeah. brown brownish tan and we made like, like a little pup hut. tent type shelter thing with it like a little a-frame situation yes yeah. is that right yes. yeah that covered yeah. it so you could kind of go down into it i also remember uh as part of that further down in that same ravine we, there was that really thick patch of briars and brambles and cutting oh, yeah. through that uh, with the shears, we did cut tunnels through the briars, which <laughs> is again a questionable decision. No, there was two. So there, we we uh, in our minds as children, these were outposts for the fortress. Also, last year, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, there was one. Yeah, so there was one further down the ravine. So if you're looking down the ravine, it would have been on the right hand side, but also up mm-hmm. on the left, like up the hill. We built a small little like. I'm going to describe it as a ring fort. Yeah. Which uh, <laughs> up by a little tree. 
that was like I think we called it the Watchtower, right? It's just like a like little. Like we like leaned some stick in a little like fence configuration, yep. like made a little stick fence around a tree, mm-hmm. and we're like, "Oh yeah, this is the right." And I think we took a piece of the canvas and just sort of made like one little side, so that it was like a little bit sheltered. Yeah. We just sort of like tied it to the tree <laughs> and then tied it to a stick, so it was like a little mini flap. I seem to remember that was up there or a piece of plastic that we got from somewhere or something. We did that up on there. Cause it was a little, there was a little shelter thing up there too. Yeah. And that was the fortress of <laughs> the woods. I don't really know. We didn't have an A for it. No. It was just, <laughs> we weren't that creative. Yeah. I mean, we built these things that, you know, gotta give us some credit, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the, wandering about the way but yeah again as an adult my mind only thinks about like there had to be like hundreds of snakes <laughs> like <right there>. constantly, <laughs> constantly on the verge of, of like mega death all the time yes we were just like yeah things you don't think about when you're 10 like snakes what's that those aren't real no yes and for those listeners not aware uh yes there are venomous snakes in missouri just sort of hanging out you know uh around so <laughs> there are quite a lot of them around dad's house sometimes so like <laughs> it's it's a wonder like we didn't get bit by anything Oh, our yeah, dogs no. sure did a lot. That's true. Maybe they kept that finding them in our forest for us. Maybe. <laughs> they were <laughs> the guard <laughs> dogs. So they were bad. rooting them out of there. Jeez. Oh, Thank you, okay. Jenny Kira. You're the best. It is kind of weird, though, if you think about, like, so we were doing that. We were, like, playing in the woods constantly, like, in rock piles and around fallen logs and... All these places where snakes dwell. My wife, uh, when she was young, she got bit by a copperhead in the leg. And she was just like walking on a road. (laughs) 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 So it's very odd the places these things are. And where where they are not. (laughs) And where they are not or where you encounter them, right? Because she was just like walking on the road. And it was just like, blam, got her in the ankle. (laughs) Dang. Wow. <clears throat> Which she describes as a not pleasant experience. Uh she <laughs> you, was <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> but yeah, it's really kind of weird we think about it in that perspective. Like we were like digging around in the forest, like rooting through probably close to snake dens. And she was just like strolling down the road to her grandma's house and like <laughs> do, 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 do. I mean, really, there you go. Yeah. Minding her own business. And there was a snake sneaking. As they do. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Other than the uh the old old bike, uh that's 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 the most excitement that we have going on. It's hot. Which I don't appreciate. It's um, so hot. So we went from forty two degrees uh, at the first of June to now it's going to be a hundred by this weekend, and I'm not happy. Oh man, Friday's going to be awful. Like I'm not even. And listeners, it's the Friday is going to be. It's today's the ninth, right? So in like two weeks, <laughs> we yeah. from forty <laughs> degrees to heat index of like a hundred, almost like <laughs> no, why? Yep. Well, that is fun. <laughs> but the first couple of days of summer school, I had to take my sweater, like my a yeah. sweater, not like a jacket. Like I had to bust out my sweater, like my fleece sweater thing. It's like it's too cold. I can't. <laughs> like, it was awesome. I had to wear something. <clears throat> yeah, it was great for a while. It's like forty degrees and rainy, and then. Now it's like a thousand degrees and humid. Yay. Favorite part of every summer. 
It's not oh, like wait. we go our morning recess for summer school is at like nine thirty, and we go outside and the grass is just wet, still from all the yeah <laughs> the moisture, the humidity, and the dew. I was like, oh, gross. No, I'm not. <laughs> so yeah, it's exciting. Might have indoor recess in the gym on Friday. I think that might be the plan. <laughs> I think that would be good. Don't have. I, <laughs> if I do that, I'm going to talk to the person I have recess with, the other teacher, be like, hey, here's the idea. Yeah. <laughs> what if we didn't go outside when it was so hot? Just wrote a block, just wrote about heat exhaustion and stress and dog. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. Or teachers. Or teachers. Right? Where I... <laughs> Here in Mexico. <laughs> I'm not. No. False. <laughs> uh we uh side note <clears throat> related to absolutely nothing but a funny thing that happened today today in class we <laughs> we talked about the size classification of chicken at lunch huh? oh. <laughs> go on <clears throat> well we I, we were talking. I was looking at the menu, and today the menu said chicken chunks, and I did not know what that meant. Okay. Right, and so we <laughs> we were talking. That was our big hypothesis of the day. It was not it was a slow day at summer school. Everybody, okay. I'm sorry. I couldn't, uh, couldn't, we couldn't. Couldn't. We couldn't try to figure out. It wasn't obvious. <clears throat> we were trying to figure out where they went in the continuum of. Of uh, so, we have decided at the end of at the end of school today we came up with the official terminology. So, at least at our school, the sizing categories go thusly: smallest to largest. It goes popcorn, chunk, nugget, strip. Boom! There you go. So if you're <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's like the size of the egg chicken that you are going to get <laughs> for lunch. <laughs> trying to come up with the way, to, yeah, the continuum of chicken portion size. Yeah, portion sizes. Yeah, huh. it's like popcorn chicken, chicken chunk, chicken nugget, chicken strip. That is the. I've never that is the. Uh, chicken chunk. I haven't really either, but that is the chicken typology that we have mapped out today in our summer school. <laughs> okay. That's a new one for me. Okay. I like it. I mean. So if you're curious ever, that's official now. That's binding. We, okay. That's published officially. So there's my official published right. binding. Is... <laughs> and peer, 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 here, let's do some peer review. Aaron, do you agree? <laughs> I concur. Okay, me too. Look, there you go. Uh, peer-reviewed cycle. Beautiful. It's official. We <laughs> have got it. <laughs> oh, my God. It's one of those days in school where we realize, like, we've started several different projects in each, like, subject. Yeah. So, like, it was kind of slow. It was like, all right, put away that one. We'll go a break. We'll do a recess. We'll do it. All right, come back in. We're going to work on our other, our different project now. And they're like, okay. And they just get right. So I wasn't really doing a lot today. I did. <laughs> a lot of supervising, a lot of wandering around, conferencing. I mean, like, yep, that's good. Do, do, do. Anyway. <laughs> Very important. Very important that conferencing, <laughs> supervising. Yes. Yes, indeed. So it was a... <laughs> that's about it. We haven't really done anything exciting. Trying to how much longer do you have? Like it just started, didn't it? Uh, yeah, it's like so. Officially, it's half over. I guess we have all next week, and then the week after that, like half the week. So we're almost there. Boom! Already, look at that. It's literally <clears throat> flying by. Literally flying by, except for probably tomorrow when it's like a thousand degrees, and I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm dying. I can't. So not what I wanted. Not what I wanted in my life. Hundred degrees already. June. Come on, June. You're supposed to be nicer to me than that. But 
I don't have any worries about August for sure. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, I remember. Blech. Anyway, Aaron, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, work um, has been relatively steady this week. Um, You're talking about the heat. He says confidently. What are you saying about about the heat? I went in and talked. um, I went in like nine in the morning to talk to a family, and there's like seven kids. And when I left, it's like when I got there, I was like, oh, this is, you know, relatively nice weather, you know, you know, it's just all day. And then I got like, I went in at nine and got out at like one and I was wearing jeans and it was just immediately soaked. I was like, oh, is everything sticky? Why? Why is, why is there dew on my car? So that was fun uh, this morning, kind of in a bit of a panic. Um, I Snapchat to call in because I was sitting here. I was kind of you know, five in, like, oh, you know, I'm gonna have a relatively easy morning. I'm gonna do this, that, the other. Then someone texted me at like eight and like, hey, you coming up here? And I'm like, hmm? what? Why? They're like, well, we have we have court at ten. I'm like, or what? They're like, this case that you work on. I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a lawyer right now, so I had to like get everything ready and like throw everything on and throw all my stuff in i was like looking at notes while i was driving and um got there like it is from, from where i live to up there it is about dead at an hour but i got behind everybody okay. going up just totally doking all the way up there so i got there with like 20 minutes to spare uh Got there. I was like, oh, "Yes, see, I was here the whole time." Um, <laughs> I mean, then I stayed up there for a good chunk of the day. Got a lot accomplished. Got a lot of typing. I got to go back tomorrow because we have a nine thirty meeting, which um, people are always like, "Oh, you know, let's go do meetings and oh, let's go be happy together." I just want to do my own typing stuff and just be, you know, left to my own devices. Like, yeah, well, we gotta be social and team. So I go back up there tomorrow, do more typing, do more documenting after meeting, and then what is that Thursday? I think yeah, it's the one, yeah. What is today? Wednesday. So I'll do that, and then um, hopefully have a chill Friday. All my Fridays recently have been crazy. Um, Shelby is getting ready to go to New York, uh, so she'll be she she'll be gone for. Close to, close to a month. Um, Whoa! She's going up there for, for uh, you know, hang out with one of her friends and go to a wedding up there. So that is where she will be. Um, Holy cow! That'll be stepping on here working. Um, yeah. So I'm uh, still waiting on the news. No one has called me yet. So that has been excruciatingly uh, anxiety ridden. Because my phone does like, who does that? This is so. Um, <laughs> that is that is what Aaron has been pretty much been dealing with um, the entirety of of this week of going out and talking with people, getting lost in Tulsa, driving around more, um, and then just kind of you know going about my day as best I can, and, and with the slightest. Thing that I think that my my phone buzzes. It's like yeah, people are calling me, and then it's like someone from work. I'm like, can't you see that I'm busy? Like this is not this is not what <laughs> I need from you right now. I didn't want to talk to you. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah, it's, it's a bit it's a bit of anxiety inducing. But um, I don't hear anything from about tomorrow. Uh, I'll start calling people and be like, did you forget me? Um, so yeah, that's what. That is what I have been dealing with. Um, had one of Shelby's friends come up from Mississippi uh, last week, or a little bit of last week. Um, so we got to party it up, Oklahoma style, whatever that means. And then she was here for a few days, drove her to the airport at like 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, for the people who travel constantly, don't know how you do it. 
Um, and so, yeah, that's uh, that's what's been, that's what life been like for me this week. I have very worrying connotations when you say things like partying it up Oklahoma style. Well, like I have yeah, images I, of like can... catfish noodling and like oh, maybe, maybe going like to a that, pig but... show and like. <laughs> Have it's not season right? oh, um, Excuse me, my part of my ignorance. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, Uncultured but no, so yeah, she, she came up here <laughs> and she'll be in, she'll be in her um, traveled and stopped in, in Tulsa, and um, we were going to go up to uh, Pahaska, where they're actually shooting um, the scenes for um, Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh yes. Uh, when it started, there has been Leo sightings up there. Um, they've completely redone downtown um, uh, the, the place, Pahaska. There we go. Nailed it. Um, and, and made it look um, very early 1900s. You know, that transitioning from the 1800s. Yeah. To completely Period. downtown. Um, so it, it, it's fascinating. We were going to go up there and do that, but we're like, I probably people. It's a Saturday in Bahaska, which weirdly <laughs> enough is packed with people. People travel from all over the place just to go to the Pioneer Woman up there. And so it's like, I you know, we did anyway, so probably oh, not. It's one of those phenomenon too of like, uh, it's the biggest area in a fairly large radius. So everybody yeah. from like all the little tiny towns that have like, a couple hundred people, they go there, mm-hmm. right? That's well, it's, how. But, it, but it's also, I mean, like, I mean, there, there's no like real places like shop or anything. Um, yeah, exactly. So that's like a center it, it, of that kind of thing. Yeah, but even, it, it's kind of like you know, for us, you know, when people talk about like, oh, I, you know, I go to Branson's the highlight, but we're like, well, that was like in our backyard, so it's a different concept for us. It's kind of the same thing like that for that area. Yeah. Um, of, of going to, um, you know, that, but it's, it, it's a hub for people, especially now people are going up there to try to, you know, see, you know, the movie sets and, That's and everything. So it's, it's, it's definitely, definitely, if you get pictures, if you get a chance to see pictures on Facebook, I, you know, it's, it's vastly different than what you know, anyone could possibly think of when you think of like, oh, they completely changed downtown. Um, I've also been, Running every day um, for about thirty minutes, thirty-ish minutes, walking slash running for up to thirty minutes um, oh, wow. every single day. Um, when I first started, so I was like, "Oh man, I do this, I'm gonna kill it!" And then, like ten minutes in, I'm like, "Oh, that's right, I haven't ran in a long time." <laughs> so um, that was that was an experience that I forgot about. Um, you know, since I haven't been what people call athletic for a long time. I forgot how to stretch and how to do um, things like that. So uh, it, it's been, it's been a learning curve for me, um, but I've kind of gotten back into the, the swing of being active that way. Um, I'm currently wearing a knee brace. And I did not stretch today. And I was like, I've Uh-oh. been sitting all day. I can, I can run. And then like I heard, I heard a pop somewhere and I thought Uh-oh. I was dying. And, um, no one was crying. Um, I don't know who was. I don't know who was crying in the gym. But, uh, but like whatever. Um, Somebody around the corner probably. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, uh, somebody. Um, but I mean that, that's. Um, I, I've been been stretching you now. Um, other than that, yeah, that's been my my week. That's quite a lot. That's very. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very eventful. <clears throat> I would like to say just a uh, side note. Back to this movie thing for just a second. Uh, I don't know if I'll watch this movie at all because, like, I don't know. I don't really do like nonfiction movies very much. But uh, I would just like to say that uh, it already has my seal of approval for shooting on the location where the story actually transpires. Yeah, right, this is all I've ever wanted. This is what yeah. I've, I've been on about this on this podcast for basically ever since we started. <laughs> Yeah, I right. think we did. Uh, <laughs> we had some video ideas of, of shooting uh, on location for for Hog, 
Uh, yes, for, uh, well, if we go back to the more know. corn and hogs, please episode, uh, where I ranted about this ad nauseum for the Hallmark channel. Um, <laughs> this, this is very, this is very, uh, I'm just very excited about this, that they, they actually came to Oklahoma to shoot a so, movie that takes place in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, this is great. This is wonderful. Like, I guess <laughs> and, oh, it's I, already I'm, infinitely better than many other things. I think you've talked about I, this. I'm, Sorry, go ahead, Aaron. Okay, I got uh, I'll go, okay, I, I, I'm a fan of it because it's literally like an hour from where I am. Um, but I, I also really like Martin Scorsese um, as a director. And so seeing well, what, yeah, he, but... what, he, what he's taken and you know, putting you know, that into like a historical concept, and plus reading the book, um, I just would, you know, yeah. very interested to see like what that transition is from you know, being well, it's a super the interesting story, anyway. Yeah, uh, the I sometimes I, whenever Martin Scorsese does things, I get a little nervous because. Martin Scorsese is also a really big fan of Martin Scorsese. So like, uh, 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 although generally the hype is real, yeah. right? The hype is generally pretty okay. But like, sometimes you're like, all right, hold on, stop for a minute. Yeah. You need to control yourself here. <laughs> so the, uh, cause like the last big project he did that whole I can't even remember what it was called, but I, I didn't hear good things about it. Everyone was like, uh, it, it was a little too much. And that's good. Uh, so, but yeah, it would be kind of cool. And again, like, because there is cultural sig- and historical significance tied to that actual location and they came to shoot the movie yeah. at that location. That's pretty cool. It's, it's also kind of a, a big thing that, um, you know, especially here in Oklahoma, that a lot of historical parts, you know, don't get talked about because we, you know, we have you know the Tulsa race r- race riots. There we go. Um, that you know is completely being you know no one ever talks about it. It's something like oh yeah that happened. Um, yeah, it, it's something you know especially that here you know you know as Oklahomans you know they're like you know we actually want a story being told because you know it happened to us and you know, the world doesn't know about it. So I, I think that is a unique thing. I, I am kind of scared because I, I watched, um, what was it, Shutter Island recently with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, and yes. And I vibe into this. Um, like, I don't want a trippy fest. No, stop it. Um, well, that was just that director, and that was a whole different movie. If yeah, you watch other movies, but, like, like... But yeah, so... Uh, no, here's the no spoiler. So in case, in case listeners are curious and they want to be on the lookout for, uh, what is it? Is it Killers of the Flower Moon? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. What what is the spoiler free kind of like introduction Whoa. to what what ha- just kind of like the baseline of what uh, happened? Okay. So the, in in summary, in conclusion, um, it, it talks about. <laughs> you didn't even tell me the um, beginning. How, how how Native Americans, especially um, the Osage Nation here in Oklahoma, um, people uh, people would kill tribal members for their tribal money. Um, the Osage Nation was actually at one point one of the richest um, groups in the United States because um, of of uh, land rights and things like that. And so the U.S. government had a um, had a law where Oh well, you know, if you were, you know, if X, you know, X amount of money, if you if you were this rich, you could not be in charge of your finances. You had to have a some sort of sponsor, and a lot of the times, the sponsors were white individuals. Um, and they're like, oh well, you can't handle your money, so we will handle it for you, kind of ordeal. And people started to realize, like, oh well, hey, you know, what's the you know easiest way besides stealing money from Native Americans? You know, let's just kill them. Um, for for the money and, and so that that's kind of that's that's the, the the crux of what this is about and how the yeah. FBI got involved and it was like one of the first real like FBI things. Um, yeah, it was that, right after the FBI, basically like in the FBI being founded, right? Mm-hmm. It, yeah. the, the book talks about J. Edgar Hoover and you know the, the Hooverisms of the time of how they you know got involved in. You know how they're using actual like scientific um, studies and research 
to you know try to be more modern because it, it talks about how you know it, it before that it was you know 100 percent excuse me like 100 percent texas rangers like go out there shoot people up and you know ask questions later so it, it was kind of the first time where modern at you know early 1900s science was implemented you know using disguises using fake identities to track people um that that was the, the kind of the first time that the FBI did that, and so that that's where kind of the movie picks up, or that that's where the book picks up is that this all happened and that change from you know the Wild West days into the modern time. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty neat. And again, for those listening, the reason the land of the Osage Nation was so valuable in oh yeah uh, sorry northern northern Oklahoma is uh, they found a whole just billions of gallons of oil underneath that sucker. So that's why, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it was valuable anyway, and then, like, that started happening. And that's kind of when the oil discoveries started happening in Oklahoma. And they're like, oh, look, it's even more. Ha-ha. You don't need that yeah. land anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, it's, it's, really, yeah. it's really fascinating with... Um, uh, there's there's a place called Wola Rock, uh, which is you know hidden deep in like the Osage uh, reservation. Um, that talks about like the history. Um, what is his name? The guy that came up with uh, Uncle Phil. Um, I haven't even been there. Oh, uh, um, but it's yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, so it, like it, it, he came to Oklahoma and started Conoco Phillips, and there's like images him of like when people would go up and um, they would bid on land rights of of the tribe and there was that guy in some of those pictures um and it, it's kind of fascinating that we get gas you know every single day from you know conoco phillips and it's like oh hey that guy was here and i forget that a lot of times the bartlesville was built on oil and especially with all these little tiny towns around here was, was built on oil and you know it, it's kind of weird to drive Especially like the you know from here to Ponca City, like you drive through those places where you know all these historical events happen, and it's like oh, like th- this is such a weird feeling because I've been to Fairfax, um, I've been to Pahuska, like that that concept of like what was supposed to what it was like like hundred some odd years ago, um, where all these murders took place, and there there's an incident where like a house was blown up and that actually happened in the husk. I've been to that house, uh, not knowing what it was at the time, but it was like, Oh, it was a little weird marker. What is that? And like learning that, Oh, Hey, this family was murdered at this house. And it was, you know, one of the, the craziest things that ever happened in that small town. And like, this is, this is history um, right here. Boom. Ta-da. Yeah. And it's definitely a weird, like for a lot of people, Right, that live in in smaller and areas in the Midwest, right? You don't you don't see your area of the world depicted in uh, any kind of media, really, ever. <clears throat> so, uh, even though this is a you know not a like it's not a good story, but it's a good story that's being told now on a larger scale. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's not like a oh hey guys, guess what? Here's a fun happy time story. It's like. <laughs> Oh boy, listen up. Yeah. Uh, it is though, it's weird though. You're right. When you see like places like that and film, you're like, wait a minute. I've been there. I know where that is. It's like right over there. Right? This yeah. is like, this is not a common because most, you know, movies and stuff like that take place in like relatively large urban areas that are like, yeah. you know, very far away from people in the Midwest or in the South or other places like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, when you do have movies that that's why this is again so interesting to me this this project that they're doing is because it's like oh yeah it's just like right it's like right over there like you can <laughs> mm-hmm. so it's kind of it's cool that it's bringing uh, a spotlight to events that probably not a lot of people know about like you alluded to already before like a lot yeah. of people don't know about that uh you know part of the history of Oklahoma specifically, or just the nation in general. And that's like, it's again, it's one of those things that like <clears throat> nobody talks about because, you know, American history is very 
uh, it's very complex, but a lot of times in schools, it's it's in school and in like where you learn about it, it gets very it's simplified so much because you mm-hmm. get like the overview kind of thing where you skip yeah. all the like really weird details and stuff. <clears throat> so, um, well, it, it, yeah, it, I, mean, it, I just think it's cool. Thing. It, it, it's such a weird thing that like people here in Oklahoma that I've talked to because I, I took an Oklahoma history class in college. Um, it wasn't, you know, exactly the best, but I, I learned a lot. But when we got to things of like the Tulsa race, race riots, it's so hard to say. Um, people are like, like, wait a second, I'm from Tulsa. How come I have never heard of that? And like, well, oh, yeah. Geez. So the word uh, I was looking for was just, survey course. That's what I was trying to say. Ah, like, gotcha. I got you. My brain, my um, brain, like stopped working. But like, yeah, you just get that like kind of the briefest overview, like skim the top of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's not tons of depth, which is frustrating. Uh, they're trying yeah. to change that, right? Like with the new. Anyway, that's a whole other conversation for later. But like mm-hmm. the way that they rewrite the educational standards now, there's room for that. Uh, but again, if the teachers don't know, not here in Oklahoma, but I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, but like if the, yeah, but you know, you know what I mean? Like if, but if nobody knows about it, you can't teach about it. So this is, it's, I think it's Mm -hmm. good that we're, they're bringing light to this kind of thing in this, this, uh, film. So again, for me, even if I don't like the finished product, uh, it gets bonus points already because it is about an area and they went to that actual area to film the movie. Mm-hmm. This is what I've wanted forever. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. I think it's bonus points for that. That's that's one of the things I'm, I think is I'm cool. excited. I'm also excited since I go to the Husky like at least once a week that I'm gonna like go into a store and be like, excuse me. It's like, oh hey, it's They're Robert like, De Niro. Oh, my gosh, Leo. oh hey. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, we'll be in the movie. Oh my gosh, stop it. So that's, I mean, there's part, part oh, you know, thing that I I want from this. I am, whatever, you know, like, oh, Aaron, do good. would be the <laughs> cast as so, the accidental extra. Just like, hey, you, come here. You're going to stand in the yeah. background and nail this hammer and like nail this fence together while Leo walks by. Like, okay. Done. Yes. <laughs> you see an overly. You know, tall, red-haired guy in the back just staring at the camera. That, but um, totally not Aaron. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I I just pulled up the Killers of Flower Moon book. Um, it's actually one of the first books in a long time that I actually have not been able to pull like put down. Um, and right here on the cover it says the, the the Osage murders and the birth of the FBI. Um, when I talked to there's there's a museum here in Pahuska, which. I would actually love if the whole family like came down for like a weekend, and you know I take you around to some of these places. Um, there, there is a um, museum up there, and I was I remember talking to one of the guys up there, and he's like, "Oh, you can read the Killers of the Flower Moon." Like, what you what you really need is that you need to read the book that you know it, it's the actual like the FBI files um, that they that they printed and are selling. And the guy, the older guy, looked at me and was like, "To be honest, it's really boring." But like, if you want to learn like what was actually done, done, he's like, I highly recommend it. And I was like, no, that's okay. I'm used to reading I mean, reading police all files. Time. Does sound so, a little boring. I'm not gonna lie. I'll just keep reading skim. my book. If he's like, oh, that book's dramatized. Like, well, of course it is, but like, I mean, I know that. But I mean, I'd much rather read this and then you know, page five eighty two. Um, this was that on this day. Oh wow! Yeah, you know, like interview, interview with random guy from yeah. So. Like, you know, one of those things. It'd be kind of cool to like have mm-hmm. around. You know, well, that's that's, that's also like, where I got the uh, one of you the could other look at it for reference. Like, I'm gonna read this one page. You know, and mm-hmm. I mean, that would be like it. Like, a... <laughs> like I, I, that's also where I got the uh, the autobiography of Pistol Pete, um, which. <clears throat> I mean, going to Oklahoma State, super cool. I mean, he's a big orange really cowboy, boring. right? That's yeah. So a... <laughs> it's like uh, it's a struggle to read, but I'm I'm a cowboy. I'm a cow pope, so I'm gonna read it. Yeah, I'm having fun. So, um, 
you, Brent, you and Susan actually got me this book. And at first I was like, oh, because it works yes, in the area. Yes, we did. <laughs> but reading this was like, this is like one of my favorite books of all time. So. Aha. Thank you. There you go. Boom. <laughs> It was all Susan's idea, so I'm gonna give her a full credit for that. So, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Cool. You, you were gonna say something beforehand, and then I completely steamrolled you. So, what were you gonna say, Colin? I didn't write it down, so I forgot. It's. Uh-oh. Uh... <laughs> I think I was going to ask for a description of what was going on, and then Brandon asked for that later. So I, oh, okay. I think it all, oh, okay. it all working in the end. You had some sort of comment after my rant about it's actually going to be filmed on location. That was where you were also at. No, but. I no, I think I was going to say, could you like what? How about a brief description of what what it is? Um, so we're good. Mm-hmm. We're good. I oh, okay. I we got that out of the way. Boom. Yeah. See, nailed it. Boom. They all work together. Ah, yeah, <laughs> on accident. Look okay. at that. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that's cool. So, eyes out. Do we know? Do we have like a release date on this? Do we know if they're still filming now? Obviously, so I guess yeah, I'm I mean, a long time. I was a little, uh, there not because I haven't heard. Kong. Oh, He's, um. According to Eduardo, the production of Scorsese's film uh, kickoff late April to shoot is expected to last this summer. The film could be ready to release by December 2021. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Well, they cool. might have got pushed back because it's still filming. That's maybe next year. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to, you know, pay so Google, you had, but like, since you're the ears, the ears on the ground. <laughs> oh, whatever I know, we all know. Pilgrim, so. All right. Sweet. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> Anything upcoming, Colin, you got going on? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm about to be, uh, well, uh, very busy. <laughs> uh, some say you're already very busy. Some say, so, some say. Like, Hey, no, uh, we're about, it's going to be, it's about to get real cooking here soon as I'm going to start in 14 day. No, not 13 day house sit, uh, here in town, uh, 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 12, uh, while, uh, also working while also doing drop-ins and other dogs while also helping. Uh, and be a bit much. That's gonna be a lot. That sounds not exciting. Um, but you know, <laughs> no, <laughs> we didn't have just how much everyone was like. School ended. Everyone went. We must leave for weeks at a time. Right now. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, we understand. Uh, we've even. uh gotten in touch with a few other pet sitters in the area and they're like oh no they're like we've we're so busy like everybody's having to turn people away like it's insane one lady actually That's nuts man talk, talked an owner into taking his dogs with him because it was like you're you're not going to be able to find a place a that has availability or b a price that you can afford to pay because he was like wow yeah she was like because he had two dogs and she said uh well um you're looking to board them somewhere you're looking at 40 dollars dog per night uh he was like 80 dog 80 dollars a night and she was like yeah and uh then he was like well what about just coming over to my he goes i was planning on he goes i was budgeting 20 and she said that will buy you one. <laughs> what? Yeah. She's like, that'll get you one drop in. Just one. <laughs> My gosh. So he was like, these are unrealistic dog expectation prices. What is happening? I know. Well, so that's uh she was she was kind of bemoaning to me on the phone today about or yesterday about it. And I was like, Yeah, 
I feel like we need to get, so I'm trying to come up with ways to bring together some of the pet sitters in the area to kind of do a simultaneous like, Co-op. education cooperative thing about what it means, right? To, to have a pet because yeah. I, the number of people this year who have reached out to us and I was, this is the marketing stuff, but um, you know, people don't know what they don't know and they don't know that they need something different than what they already know. Yeah, so, that's true. A people already, when, if they think of having the dog taken care of for one of two things, one, I'm going to board it because that's what I know. I'm going to put him in a kennel. I'm gonna bet. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to board them. Or two, I'm going to have my neighbor or family member come and watch my dog. Well, many people's family members or neighbors. It works for like uh, a night. Right. A night. Like, <laughs> right. right. Or, or family, family members and neighbors are getting older and can no longer do dog care or can no longer come over for a week at a time or whatever. Yeah. Or friends and neighbors already have prior commitments and can't take time out of their schedule to watch your dog or they're traveling (laughs) right so (laughs) yeah or they're also gone and so their two defaults immediately get wiped out from underneath them because most of the boarding is full and the owner and their friends family can't do it so then they come to us and like all of a sudden that we're having to do a good educational opportunity of this is a viable option right doing three drop-ins a day for your pet to come in, either give them a short walk, do medications, do all this stuff. And and it 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 takes a lot, I feel like, to get people in that mindset of that's okay. It's not not that, that it's quote just okay, but it's totally sufficient and your dog will be just fine. And uh Yeah. Right. So there's there's a lot that goes into that, obviously, but um we're that's something that we're kind of trying to start working on together as a community. Well, that's cool. That'd be good. Hopefully that takes off and you can do some stuff. Or segue time. You could maybe volunteer for round two of this. So I this is a few months old now. But I just want to think get your thoughts on this. Uh since you need some time away, Colin. Yeah. Since you're gonna be so busy. Uh back in April. The very end of April. So just um in France, they they ended uh, some sort of like isolation study where they took 15 people and they set them in the bottom of a cave for 40 days. Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's big, giant, like super deep cave in France, uh-huh. right? They put them in there uh-huh. for 40 days and then left them. A. Oh, like the deep time project here is what I wrote down. And so the, the goal was to see like how people adapt to extremely drastic changes in their living environment and how they like handle that. Uh, and so, so I want to know, Colin, are you signing up for that round two? You know, um, do you want to live in a cave in the dark for 40 days? I think I'm pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd rather not. <laughs> it's oh, crazy. So some of the stuff, like, they, like, basically, uh, very quick, from what I read about this, very quickly, everybody completely lost any sort of sense of time, right? Yeah. And they just sort of created mm-hmm. their own. a new one yep. based on, so, like, it was just kind of like, well, whenever they felt like sleeping, slept, and whenever they needed to do things, they did it. And then, like, they developed like stuff they needed to do. Like they kind of just delegated all these tasks so everybody could do their stuff. And when the the team came to get them, uh, a, a lot of people were very surprised. Like, Oh, you're back already. What are you doing here? And some of the people were so committed to this that they're like, well, I can't, I can't leave yet. I'm not done with my, my job. I was doing over there. Give me a minute and I'm going to finish. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) <laughs> they wow. had so completely settled into this new routine and this like mini society that they had created within 40 days of working with each other that they're like I mean do we have to leave yet we're we're not done we're doing stuff so like That's apparently crazy. they weren't bored in this cave that is crazy it's insane I can't even imagine so what was the what was like the finding 
Uh, well, that was just it. It was just about it was about kind of like people's. Um, I haven't read the published findings yet because I don't think they had like mm. that was just the, it was over, and so I don't think they had finished. They might have by now, so I might have to go back and double check on that and see that. But it was kind of just like how it, about adapting to like extreme environments, right? So this is like thinking about like extreme isolation, like space travel, uh, stuff like that. Kind of in that kind of regard of what's what's this going forward. Um, so uh, that was kind of the point of it, but yeah, it was pretty nuts when I read that. I was like, "What? They did what?" Also, let's just talk about like, oh yeah, they have some like some stuff published, you know, so you could look at that. Um, if you just Google like French isolation study, blam, there it is. Uh, like, <laughs> I have seen too many movies. Uh, I am not sleeping in a cave for yeah, 40 well, for days. Sure. No, I was gonna be like, "What was that?" There's something the offer. Here. I'm okay. good. Like, uh, I've seen how this ends. <laughs> I've seen, yeah, I've seen the descent. I don't. It's just so weird. Like complete sensory deprivation, right? Like complete, like no contact with anybody else except for the friend and a few people that you're there with. Could be a very, could be a very weird environment. Maybe Colin needs to escape to a cave in France after his hectic time in the next few weeks. So we'll see. If we can't get a hold of him, Aaron, we'll know where he is. He's in a cave somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, and um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. So on that, <laughs> ah! <laughs> that suspicious, suspicious, suspenseful. That's a word. I'm tired. Well, <laughs> words are hard. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Think about how hard they're going to be for you when you come out of your cave in Missouri. Yeah, right? After. Yeah, this is, maybe I can just find one here locally. I don't have to go all the way over to France. I mean, I can almost guarantee you that you can. Like, give us... <laughs> yeah, find a people to get back out, but... Man. Ah! That's fair. 40 days no. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Okay, well, challenge for next time. Uh, go to... Ah, ooh, well, complete we do need another challenge, but maybe not living in a cave. Maybe not going <laughs> full on Gollum. That might not be a good out challenge for us. Out for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that story is perfect for Gollum. Spoilers. Found his true it love. Doesn't. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll work on a challenge for next time. And uh, until then. Right, well, maybe not for next time, but I think we do need a challenge. Oh, two so, times for yeah. I, I was thinking about that today. I was like, oh, we should do something. What? I don't know, but... We'll think about it. <laughs> yes. You have our promise that we will think about it and then probably forget about it. And yes, indeed. It right okay. to record again. <laughs> It'll be on the list. Possibly. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you, Love you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>